and especially on heavier land where black grass and cleavers and thistles are a real problem to, to get farmers to um, deliver this option. I twisted um, Brian and Patrick's arm because it is, it is one of the priority options when their H um, high tier agreement was being assessed, um, I asked them to comply or, or deliver this what's known as a wild pollinator and farm wildlife package, which is where farmers entering mid tier or, or higher tier have to comply with this to get a score uplift and make give themselves a better chance of succeeding. Sure. And um, they have a, there are a list of priority habitats that contribute to that target to that calculator or target and cultivated margins for arable plants, which this one is here is one of them and actually it's the full width including the, the lovely crop of winter wheat which are volunteers is was autumn cultivated was it if i remember right so this half yes. here with all of the, the volunteer was autumn cultivated and the half to the left spring cultivated i've asked um, brian and patrick to, there, yeah. to split their cultivation timings between autumn and spring because different rare arable plants have different germination timings the shepherd's needle which is one of our rare arable plants which can be a real pest on heavy land near Debenhams, Haverhill Way. For some farmers they'll think why are you trying to conserve this species but it is a nationally scarce weed. That is an autumn germinator so it likes autumn germinating, autumn um, cultivation timing where other um, rare arable plants um, say corn marigold or Venus's looking glass um, they prefer a sort of spring cultivation. The reason why we've actually done the split timing here isn't because they've got rare arable plants here. We're trying to see what turns up over the next few years, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing really rare here, here at the moment, but the reason why we did this option was for turtle dove. So one of the best um, habitats um, or options for turtle dove are weed rich, um, seed rich habitats. And by doing it in the autumn and the spring, you get some early germinating seeds now here on the right for when the turtle dove turn up at the end of, sort of April, May. So they get some early food from the bit on the right hand side. And then the, the, the left hand side will provide weed seeds later in the summer for them. So we're sort of trying to extend the, the seed ripening period for, for the, the turtle dove. What we do actually have here was when Brian and I came and had a look around on Tuesday, there are actually some um, nice arable plants, including one that he's holding there, sh um, sharp leaf fluellum, which I always use as, a, as an indicator species. If you tend to find on light, sandy, um, chalky soils, this one, which is sharp leaf fluellum, or its sister, round leaf fluellum, which really likes chalky soils, where you find this species, you often find rarer ones, which are the ones which we're really after, like prickly poppy, rough poppy. There's an amazing cornflower site at Hawley Benz, um, and the farmer next door to that who doesn't have cornflowers, he has. Um, David Dawson, he has round leaf, um, um, rough poppy and prickly poppy and I only started looking for them when I started finding these other sort of more common plants but slightly rare ones which you don't often see everywhere and I've started finding this on my dad's farm after about 15 years, never had it and now it's starting to turn up in our winter bird food. But this is a lovely little snapdragon and it's, it's a good indicator and this is, for, from an agro agronomist perspective, an awful looking option. It looks horrendous, it's weedy, and, and it does pose weedy problems. So you normally, I would advise a farmer who agrees to do this, say for turtle dove, is you, you keep it in the same place, no more than about two years, and then you try and move it, because you start getting perennial sow thistle, creeping thistle, other weeds turning up, um, and black and um, grass weed populations can be a problem. You can treat um, fallows with a graminicide, but I don't recommend using Fuselade Max routinely because of resistance issues. But if you did have black grass or um, brome here, you could potentially use that without a derogation to treat a grass weed problem. But it's interesting on the right hand side, there's just as much of this fluellum in there where it's got the competition from the autumn weeds, but there's lots of chickweed, there's um, field pansy, um, scarlet pimpernel, it's another food plant that turtle doves um, registered as eating, but Turtle doves love chickweed, fumitry, and a whole range of arable plants. And that's what we're trying to get um, Brian and Dave, um, Patrick to do here. And it might be it gets moved in the future and we might start finding rarer plants. You've never had fumitry on your farm, have you? Only, only occasionally. Just when you sowed? It was on lighter land, was it? Yeah, lighter land. Yeah. In the past. Anyway. But this, this option does tend to prefer lighter soils, but it can work on heavy land. So um, if you, but you need to move it, avoid avoid really dirty fields you don't want to be putting it where you've got a really big big problem <coughs> yeah yeah absolutely 
some arable plants like fertility so corn flowers they actually do like a bit of fertilizer and you sometimes see more corn flowers in a standing crop that's had a bit of fertilizer than in the cultivated margin but generally low fertility will allow the broadleaf species to start coming on so in a few years time are you intending to keep it here for a few years or going to move it Yeah. <laughs> and then our natural advisor said, you can't do that on this field, we want something for our turtle doves, and so he changed it to this option. And then I saw this and I was just like, oh, what a horrible thing. Yeah, this but this, this, this can move anywhere. I, I think it needs then, to stay here to get the most out of it. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. You've got quite a few sunflower grazers out there, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, then I actually walked in with Dave yeah. and actually saw yeah. all the micro yeah. little flowers. Yeah. yeah. And actually, it does look for a, for a farmer pride wise you think oh that's terrible. terrible but go and walk it go and look yeah. at it and there's a there's a completely different world in yeah. there this is, the, yeah. world this is a real big hitter from an ecological outcomes. It, it ticks so many boxes. You're looking at beneficials, pollinators, you're looking at farmland birds, hares, hedgehogs, everything uses spiders. that. Spiders. Um, um, it's great. The only p things you need to think about is don't put them on steep slopes where they're going to erode. You need to avoid that. We don't want to put a load of pesticide soil into someone's garden. Um, it doesn't do well on a shaded side of a hedge, so you wouldn't put it on the other side of this hedge here. They do, um, rareable plants will not grow well in a shaded location. You'll just get nettles and sterile brome there if you put it at the wrong side of a hedge. So this is a good location here and going around. Interestingly, the fallow, fallow goes all the way around. We'll drive past it in a second there and it doesn't look anywhere near as interesting as this top end does it this, this is where the spring of the flowers are the spring. okay so that's where you've seen more <laughs> so th yeah. this has only had like a just a scuffle over in the autumn that's the and then then the same in the spring yeah, uh, yeah. half of it this, this top half it was stubble which we then scratched with power harrow in the autumn then we hedge cut it in the winter so this strip nearest the hedge got then re-leveled up with the, the power harrow um, just in the spring and then the bottom half then got done completely in the spring so you've got spring from where we go through that gap there at the bottom of the hedge all the way around to basically that sharp pointy house at the far end that's where the, the headland has been done in the spring and then this headland was aimed to be done in the autumn uh, um, so that got done in the autumn so you've got spring and autumn and then obviously this strip next to the hedge cut was done again in the spring so what sort of value £532 plus your BPS and if this was a spring cultivated margin that had followed a, a stubble as well you could get paid for the stubble before that as well for another £84 so it works out at about £850 per hectare is top top payment rate. Yeah. Can you enhance it with flowers? Not, not this one, no. I would not recommend broadcasting alien seed into a into a native soil, or so that you'd be starting to sort of like we, from a purist point of view. If I say natural England's hat now, yeah. you're starting to like mix up the DNA, and, and we don't like that. Okay. But it's, even if you've got nothing of interest at all, that's that's a little bit different. But if you yeah. had a say, you had some rareable plants yeah. there. Say you had some corn flowers that were genuine corn flowers. If farmers started sowing some corn flour that's grown somewhere else in the world, we would be a little bit. Okay. Yeah. miffed by that and um but i understand that sowing nice mixes with flowers in is is part of drawing the public in to try and support us in what we do so not against it yeah. but in the right place putting these options all in the right places will deliver better outcomes going forward on my dad's farm we've put options in the wrong places in our previous agreement and then we've corrected this time around and that's what we're just trying to learn at the moment but so i'm not a no-no but probably a no in right. some cases yeah, yeah. Daisies yeah. and everything. Oh, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> but actually, when you actually walk into it, there's a serious amount of colour. When you yeah. get on your hands and knees and be, or be a squatting farmer in your field, actually go and that, look that, in there. The flower on the Flewellum is one of the prettiest things if you can get on your knees and have a look at it. It's like a little um, snapdragon or um, whatever that one was, where anti riding we used to play with as kids. It's like a little dragon when you opened the mouth. And um, incredibly, we in natural England, us tree huggers, see the value in, in that. but. We're trying to sell to you why it might be valuable for other reasons. And turtle dove will be feeding on that bare ground, short vegetation. It won't probably want to be sit, it sat in amongst all that wheat there, but it's you've got an amazingly diverse sort of um, sward structure there from hedge to tussock to short grass to taller. It's what we call sort of heterogeneic sort of sward structure. You want loads of diversity, and that's what we're just trying to get 
in the farmed environment through whatever options it is and in the future you'll be able to choose which way those options are really. I also spent an afternoon digging out four thistles and yeah. still have the um, yeah. listeners to. So there is a bit of extra management that has gone on. Absolutely. And then Patrick's squ failing that he's saved these injured so he can't do it. So <laughs> apparently I've got to do the rest of it as well. So. <laughs> David, how different would that look if we had a normal amount of rainfall? In terms of that, because yeah, that, that, that's what I reckon if I got my Canopios or app out that estimates green cover, that would probably be less than 10% if you did an aerial view, but you'd be looking at 30% cover now. Yeah. But I like that. I like the fact, and um, what we don't like obviously is drought that's preventing some of your crops that you sow for schemes like winter bird food. We're having real problems with getting going, but here it works to your advantage because you've actually got some autumn cult, autumn established habitat there on the right hand side by default that's creating something as a refuge for your partridge and hares and everything else isn't it so yeah mm. is that all right right we'll